For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Greg Rubel. All right, we go top seven. Time for a PZ Printing pitching change brought to you by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print. The Cougars' fifth pitcher on the night is number 29, Jake Porter. Jake getting into his 22nd game, a 3.94 ERA, a 2-0 record on the year. He's gone 29 and two-thirds. He's given up 33 hits, just 14 runs, 13 of them earned. Striking out 19, walking 11. Batter sitting 292 against Jake. I don't know much, but I do know this. BYU's undefeated when they have four home runs in a game this year. I, I actually concur and know that that's a fact. Because I called that game with yes, you. Yes, indeed. So for the second time this year, and the second time in a week and a half, BYU has a four home run game. The Cougars hit four dingers and a win at Miami to end that series, to win one of three down at Coral Gables. Porter facing Marcus Galvin to open the seventh. And opens 0-2. I also know this. Since Tuckett Slade has come into the broadcast booth, BYU's on a bit of a home run tear. They have 12 home runs in six games with you on the headset. So averaging two a game, not too bad. not too bad. Just trying to do my part up here, you know. One ball, two strikes to Galvin. (laughs) Zach York is on deck. High ball, two. Two balls, two strikes to Galvin. Galvin batting 375 on the year. And after an 0-2 opening, three straight balls from Porter. And you don't want him on base because the guy on deck can cut this lead to a one run really quick. 7-4 Cougs, top seven. And he walked him after an 0-2 start to the count. So lead batter aboard on a base on balls. And here comes Zach York. Well, let's York with eight, that, eight uh, dingers on the year. Definitely a guy who can hit into a double play. So He's done it seven times this year. Grounded into double play, and that leads the Lopes. one to York. Two and O to Zach York. Yeah, Jake threw two really good pitches to get ahead of 0-2, the last batter, and then every pitch since has actually missed a little bit worse. And so Parker Goff calls a timeout to go settle him down a little bit. 16 career home runs for the sophomore Zach York, again listed at 6'2", 295. He was a freshman All-America last year at Grand Canyon. Set the program record for hits by a freshman at 75 in his first campaign. What was his batting average last year? Last year he batted uh, just 281. Mm -hmm. Sorry, no, pardon. He was 368 last year. It's down this year, but it was 368 last year. That's when you saw him jump onto the scene. 278 for the moment. And takes called strike. Two and one. That's a super high average. Yes. For a guy playing his first year of college ball. With the power numbers. Didn't get that. Nub- nubbed it off the fist. Foul up the first baseline. Usually you'll see a guy hit, you know, over 300 as a freshman, but he might have two or three homers, not 360 with eight homers. And one of the rare guys who almost hit and weighed over 300 in the same season. He is an imposing presence in the box. Yes, he is. Every swing he takes, too, is just vicious. It's like, wow, what's he going to do with it? Fouled it again, 2-2 two and two to York. His swings are Ruthian, we could say. Definitely. Three balls, two strikes. Jake's delivery is high. Galvin's on first with a leadoff walk. Or top seven, Cougs lead by three. And he walked him. So back-to-back walks, and the tying run comes to the plate here in the top of the seventh. Galvin goes to second. York will take his base. And Cooper Neville, the shortstop do-up, and he is stepping into the box as Abe Alvarez steps out to the mound. BYU's pitching coach making a visit along with the other BYU infielders. It doesn't appear to be time for a change. You just can't do that, Greg. You have 
a three-run lead. You just had two solo shots to take a three-run lead going into the seventh inning. Feeling confident, momentum's your way, and then you come out and you walk the first two guys of the inning. Just all of a sudden now, Lopes have a chance. You're one hit away from tying this game up. The nine, one, and two hitters do up now. Still no one out in the seventh. Those two home runs, though, looming super large at this point with Anderson and Reuter going solo shots in the sixth to give the Cougars some insurance and a three-run lead. Yet the tying run comes to the plate in Cooper Neville. Neville tonight is 0 for 2, strikeout and line out. Doesn't have a home run on the year. And is batting just 125 on the year. So a guy you'd want to see to get one out, you'd think, before the top of the order comes up. But a 1-0 opening from Porter. Neville has two hits in his last 16 at-bats. Did not play in the first game against BYU back at Sloan Park in Mesa to open the season. The 1-0. A check. The barrel came off the shoulder, but it's low. Ball two. So Jake's had some good counts to work with, and this is not one of them here. This is a 2-0 opening to Neville. The light-hitting nine-hole hitter. Swings and misses for strike one. Got a piece of it. Foul tip strike. No one out, two aboard. Galvin on second. York on first. Hmm. That was off the bat quickly into the BYU dugout. Everyone's okay down there. Now a sliced foul right into the BYU dugout. And two and two. Two balls, two strikes to Neville. Can Porter wipe him out here? Oh, pitches away and pops out of the glove of Goff. Yeah, tough break right mm. there. And that's more pass than, does it feel more pass than Wilder? Was that just, it was an outside pitch, clearly, but I, yeah, thought, we caught that I ball. thought Parker had that stab yeah. and just squeezed out of the leather. So runners advance to third and second, respectively, in Galvin and York. The 3-2. Grounded slow roller handled by Beck. Does he get him? He does it first, but a run scores. And Galvin from third, reaching third is York, and it's an RBI ground out for Neville. And Coop had to make, or rather Beck had to make a heck of a throw. It was a slow roller over the head of Porter on the mound. By the time it got to Beck, he had to really laser it over, and he did to get him by maybe an eighth of a step. So Neville with a 6-3 RBI ground out. And makes it a two-run game. So the tying run remains at the plate. Now it's in Tyler Wilson. And Abe Alvarez is going to pull Jake Porter from the game. We'll take a break for a PZ printing pitching change on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Cougars baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's another PZ Printing pitching change presented by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print. Luke Sterner is the next pitcher for BYU. Sterner in for Porter, and Luke making his 15th appearance, a 7.40 ERA, 1-0 record for Luke. He's made three starts on the year, 20 and two-thirds innings pitched on the year, a little more than a hit per inning at 21. He's allowed 17 runs, all of them earned. Has struck out 20, walking 14, batters hitting 269 against Sterner. Let's take a look at pitching numbers. Speaking of the new pitcher, they're brought to you by Big O tires. We call it on the rubber. Look at how both teams are pitching. Through six innings, Grand Canyon pitchers have allowed seven hits, seven runs, five of them earned, striking out 11, walking five. Two wild pitches, no hit batsman, 145 pitches thrown. BYU pitchers through now six and a third have scattered four hits, giving up five runs. All of them earned, striking out nine and walking five. No wild pitches. One hit batsman, 118 pitches thrown by the Cougars. That's on the rubber, brought to you by Big O Tires, the team you trust. Greg Grubel and Tuckett Slade, BYU Baseball Operations Director with you. And the best hitter in the WAC will now come to the plate as the tying run in a 7-5 ball game. BYU 7, Lopes 5, top 7, one out, one aboard. That's Zach York for Tyler Wilson. Wilson began the game. With a solo home run, his 14th of the year, 25th of his Lopes career, has since flied out and struck out one for three on the night. Batting 376 on the season. Yeah, and you have the defense playing in the deep shift. They're not playing in to cut off that run with a two-run lead. Even if he scores a third, you still have the one-run lead, so you're trying to get the out here. If you play in, you're taking away those opportunities to get him out. The shift right for BYU. 
opposite field smack, and it'll be foul off the base of the wall in the left field corner. So Chipper Beck, the shortstop, plays where second base would play. Luke Anderson, the second baseman, plays in short right, and Ruder hugs the line at first. The lone infielder on the left side for BYU is Drew Robinson at third. 0-1 to Wilson. 21-game hit streak after his home run in the first. And grounds it into the shift. Handling, and then pirouetting with it, and then throwing it away is Chipper Beck. And... York will reach home plate on the play. 7-6. Lopes make it a one-run game, and the runner at first is down. Yeah, there's nothing both the runner or Ruder could have done there. Chipper's spin throw threw him into the line, so Ruder's trying to grab it. And so Wilson collided with Ruder yeah, as the throw was wild like at I, first. I'm pretty sure the ball went out of play, so that means Wilson's going to also get second. Get to second. Yeah. So a run will score, and the tying run will now go to second. The go-ahead run will come to the plate. So the grounder into the shift, and Beck in handling it had to spin and throw, and the spin and throw took the throw wide at first. Yeah, tough play because of where they're playing. Their second baseman's so deep that Chip's got to come a long way from where he's playing to try to make that. Ruder looks to be okay. Judd uh, Jud Franson's out checking, taking a look at him, but he's kind of waved him off. Judd Franson, BYU's baseball trainer, and he will watch from a distance as the E6 allows Wilson to reach and York to score. Now, he would have scored on the ground out anyway, yeah, so, so you'll, you'll, you'll give an yeah, RBI for Wilson RBI. on that. It was left fewer than two outs there. And so it is, an, it is an RBI for Wilson, as York would have scored on the play regardless. So give Wilson an RBI and make the score 7-6. Two have scored here in the seventh. It's a one-run ball game, and now another Lope is going to head to the dugout here. Yeah, so like Wilson's going to leave yeah. the game. And a pinch runner for Tyler Wilson will be Cannon Peary. So Cannon Peary enters the game to pinch run for Wilson. What kind of injury? Like, could they use this one as a concussion no, type evaluation? I don't, I don't or is so it because it was a le- they hit leg to leg, so... I- Unless so he's probably think, he's yeah, out of the game I'm pretty then. Pretty sure he'd be out. And so on second base is Peary. Taking second on the overthrow. Wide at first. 7 6 ball game. The batter is Eddie Pelk. And takes a called strike from Luke Sterner. And they're going to give that a single, uh, a base hit, not an error, by the way, on the initial ground out. But yeah, then an E6 on the overthrow allows him to reach second. Right. Yeah. Moves a second. So, yeah, you get the single RBI and then the, the E on the throwing error for Chip. And then the runner gets the second because it went to the dugout, threw it into the dugout. So a base hit and an error on the play. Slow roller off the end of the bat to Robinson at third, and he will good play. gun out Pelk really at first. Play. For out number two. That's a swinging bunt down the line. The crew has to come get, make a bang-bang play for a guy who hasn't played but five innings this year, six innings now. <laughs> of third base, third getting base. his first start at third. He hasn't been called on a lot, but his two chances have been really solid. And so on the 5-3, that's now two gone, and the runner up to third is Peary, the pinch runner for Wilson. It's the tying run now 90 feet away, but two are gone for Eli Payton. Breaking ball stays high and away. And just, when you, just when you take the somewhat comfortable three-run lead, you know, you get back-to-back walks, end up scoring, and now you're back to one run with the tying run at third because of the air. So sometimes you just can't have nice things, Greg. Mm-hmm. Two runs on a single hit. A ground ball stabbed and wow. thrown out. Beautifully wow. done by wow. Luke Anderson at second. The grounder to Luke. He's fired up. That's a play right there, Full extension to his right, saves a run, and keeps the Cougars in the lead. A 4-3 on an exceptional diving stop by Luke Anderson. Pops up and guns out Peyton with just enough room to spare. And this score stays 7-6. The Lopes scored two runs on a hit. There was an error and one left on board. We go to the stretch. 7-6 Cougs on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Cougars baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 
maybe a game-saving play just turned in by Luke Anderson to end the top of the seventh. A diving snag of a grounder to second. And he gets Eli Payton to end the inning, an inning in which the Lopes scored two, but the Cougs stay in front 7-6 to six here in the seventh. Bottom of the seventh, six, seven, eight hitters, Goff, Scow, and Robinson do up for the Cougs, and Parker takes ball one. From a new pitcher for the Lopes, number 57, Ben Smith, left-hander, first lefty BYU seeing tonight. BYU on the year hitting lefties almost 30 percentage points better than righties. 276 against Southpaws, 245 against righties when the night began. 2-0 from Smith. That's in on the fist and popped up. Back out of play. 2-1 to Parker Goff. Parker tonight is 0-2 with the base on balls and a run scored. BYU's on-base percentage leader has been on base once tonight. Did not play in the first game against Grand Canyon opening weekend down in Mesa. The southpaw winds and deals outside. 2-2 two and two from Smith to Goff. 7-6 yeah, BYU bottom 7. Both these lineups are completely different than that opening weekend between the two teams. 3-1. Not 2-2. Opposite field smack into the gap and off the base of the wall. Parker Goff into second. A stand-up double to lead off the BYU seventh. A great so swing. a huge play made yes. to end the top of the seventh, saving a run, and then a runner in scoring position early in the bottom. Yeah, got a fastball running away at 87, and he, what does he do? Takes it to right center, one hops the the wall. Great piece there, Parker. So on base twice in four plate appearances. That's how he becomes the on base percentage leader for this BYU team this year. So what Goff is, on second for Riker Scow. His on base, anyways. When the night began, yeah, his on base was uh, 386. That will bump up a little bit. Oh, and that's down. a fair ball down the third baseline. Wow. Just inside the bag. Coming around third to score is Parker Goff. The Cougs have another insurance run. It's 8-6. to six. It's yeah. an RBI double for Riker Scow in the left field corner. That's called placement right there, Greg. Perfectly hit right down the line. The third baseman is playing in for bunt coverage, thinking that he might try to sacrifice Parker to third. But no, he just first pits. Fastball right down over the bag for back-to-back doubles on back-to-back pitches. And the third baseman, Peyton, smacks his glove in frustration after what you just described as the setup there. So back-to-back doubles for BYU. Scoring on the scow double is Goff, and it's 8-6 to six Cougars. And that's how you answer runs. They just put up a two-spot, and you come right back. By the way, the Cougs won the race to six runs tonight. They were the first to get to six. And the Cougars on the year 14-5 and five when they scored just six or more. 8-6 now, bottom seven. Robinson batting with Scow in scoring position. Crew takes 0-2. Yeah, well right here if you're Crew, two strikes, you're just trying to, hey, roll over to second base. Find a way to get Scow to third with one out. Have a quality at bat here. And swings and misses. Down on strikes is Robinson on three pitches. So one gone for Chipper Beck, the nine-hole hitter. Scow on second. Chipper in the box and McChesney on deck. So with one out, Beck and McChesney do up in a two-run BYU lead, 8-6. We're getting late, bottom seven. BYU will lead through seven. Well, Chips had a couple of hits his last two games played. He had one on Friday night as a pinch hitter and had one Saturday, at least one Saturday, right? And yes, and now his hits in four of his last six yeah. games played. 0 for 3 tonight. Chipper on Saturday was 1 for 4 and scored a run after his hit in the seventh against Cincinnati. And both his hits were to right field. Mm-hmm. To Opposite field yeah. for the... Right-handed hitting Chipper Beck, 2-0, count Chip. And he goes to right field, Uh but a nice diving stop made by the second baseman. Pops up and fires. Man, good play. And out on the 4-3 is Beck. That was Sanders now in at second base. Torrey Sanders taking Dustin Crenshaw's spot at second base on the field and in the five spot in the batting order. So two gone for Crew McChesney. Crew saw his streak of eight consecutive plate appearances reaching come to an end with a swinging strikeout in the sixth inning. 
a crew who certainly fit the bill since entering the leadoff spot for the first time on Saturday against Cincinnati. Yeah, I think he has three hits against lefties on the air, two or three hits, and so it's not an overmatch here. I think he can get the job done. Lefty-lefty matchup, a 1-0 count now to Crew. Goes to 2-0. McChesney hitting lefties almost as well as righties. 3 for 10 against the left-handers for an even 300. 2-0 count to the Cougars center fielder. Takes high, 3-0. Yeah, with Luke on deck, this is going to be a full take mode here. The way he's seeing it today. Luke's having himself a night three for four with two home runs and three RBI. And a take. Fastball on the outside edge bites the frame for one strike. That's a good take there. 3-0. and It's not your pitch. By the way, Anderson, he was 0 for his last 17 coming into tonight and just totally reemerged in one game. Took a day off. They gave him a day off on Saturday, right? And maybe just what the doctor ordered for yeah, Luke. Sometimes a, a reset, a mental reset is what kids need. Grounded foul up the first baseline. In fact, Luke's last RBI before tonight came in the Abilene Christian midweek, a Monday morning game two weeks ago, right? Yep. The week of the Miami game. So it's been more than a week, more than two weeks since his last RBI, and he has three tonight. Was one for four against Grand Canyon and Mesa, three for four tonight. So a four for eight performance for the series. And a swing and a miss from Crew, and he's down for, on strikes for the second time in as many plate appearances. But the Cougs do score a run here in the bottom of the seventh, a big one, to give the Cougs a two-run lead. One run on two hits, no errors, no, and one left on base. We go to top of the eighth, 8-6 eight, BYU on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Greg Rubel. Back at Miller Park. Time for a PZ Printing pitching change. Top of the eighth we go. New pitcher for BYU's Boston Mabius, the southpaw. Boston comes into the game. PZ Printing brings you our pitching changes. PZ Printing, nothing inspires like print. Boston makes his 25th appearance. Second most on the team to Stone Cushing's 26. Boston working with a 5.27 ERA. A 2-0 record on the year. Has gone 27 and a third. A little more than a hit per inning at 29. He's given up 22 runs, six of them unearned. And nearly two to, two to one strikeout to walk ratio. 37 strikeouts and 19 free passes. Batters hitting 266 against Mabius. What's the book on Boston, Tuckett? Well, I'm talking about 90, 90, 90, 92 mile an hour fastball, wipeout curveball, uh, and a good little splitter change that he has. And his last, I'd say, seven or eight appearances, he has been lights out. His numbers have been phenomenal. Of late. Maybe this will get the four, five, six hitters in a two run ball game. First hitter he faces has a base hit into the left field corner. That's Bo Ankeny. Ankeny's going to hold it first with a single to left. So lead batter aboard and tying run comes to the plate in Troy Sanders. Sanders came in as a pinch hitter for Dustin Crenshaw and took his spot at second base. So lead off single by Ankeny. 8-6 BYU, top eight. BYU's lost only two games all year when they take a lead into the eighth, but that'll be a base hit to center field. Crew McChesney's going to backhand going first to third on the play is Ankeny. And so base hit for Sanders. And it's first and third, nobody out. And now the tying runs at first base for the Lopes. Yeah, back-to-back -back just hard hit balls right there. Elevated fastball, he hit right back up the middle. Cade Verdusco will now bat with a runner in scoring position. And represents the go-ahead run on an 8-6 BYU lead. Again, the Cougs have been very good at closing out these types of games. 16-2, the BYU record when taking a lead into the eighth. One loss came to Baylor in extras here. And one loss came just last week to Cincinnati in that series opener where the Bearcats got hot late in game one. Did most of their scoring in the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings as things got away from the Cougs in that series opener. And Boston gets a called strike to Cade Verdusco. 0-1 to Verdusco. We'll give up a run here if you can get a double play. We've not seen a double play for either team tonight, I don't think. Mm. No, we haven't. BYU 38, 
Twin Killings turned defensively on the year, and the Lopes have 43 themselves. 1-1 the count. That was a pitch just missing on the inside edge. The 1-1 to Verdusco. High and away, 2-1 and one from Mabius. Here in this eighth inning, we'll take a look at the Big 12 scoreboard. We explore the Big 12 scoreboard, brought to you by Explore Utah Valley. Two balls and a strike to Verdusco. And smacks one in the air opposite field into the right field corner, and no play to be made. Cade, or Cooper Vest was giving chase. May have landed in like the GCU landed, bullpen. Yeah, I think it did. So of the seven midweek games scheduled for tonight in the Big 12, only two will be completed. Hmm. Only three got started. Four were canceled. The weather cancellations. Yeah, four were canceled. One started and was declared no contest due to rain in Cincy earlier today with UConn. And two are being played tonight. Oh, that's a Huge out. Pitch. Swing and a miss from Verduzco. And one out here in the top of the eighth. After back-to-back -back singles by Ankeny and Sanders, Verduzco goes down on strikes. And so now it's two out. And a double play could end the inning now for BYU with Marcus Galvin hitting. And they're going to pinch hit yeah, for Galvin. It'll be Alton Geiselman. Geiselman's a heck of a hitter. Again, one thing about Grand Canyon resting a lot of its starters is the pinch hitters are going to be really good. And Geiselman's one of those guys, Ullman. He's hitting 271. A 356 on base. Normally the catcher smacks it out of play opposite field. It'll be 0 1 to Geiselman. Well, he got the big strikeout. And now you're looking really for that double play right here. A little. 6-4-3, get out of this unscathed. Okay, someone will take Galvin's spot behind the plate as well. Foul to the netting, 0-2, so Boston gets ahead 0-2. So back to that Big 12 scoreboard. The only other game besides BYU Grand Canyon is Houston-Sam Houston. And Houston went to Sam Houston and won by a final score of 4-3 tonight. The sad reality of that UConn game getting banged is uh, Cincinnati needed that win. RPI-wise. I think they got maybe six innings in. Hit high to left field. It'll stay in the park as Riker Scow will settle under it. Tagging at third and coming home is Ankeny. No throw to the plate. And it's a one-run ball game. So a sacrifice fly for Alton Geiselman on a fly out to left. So an RBI for Geiselman. Scoring from third is Ankeny. Holding at first is Sanders. And now two gone for Zach York. Zach York. Heck of a hitter having the eight hole for you. Well, and this, With is, the the on. this is the matchup that you would think would, you know, be in, in favor of Boston here. Left on left. Good breaking ball. In tight. Oh, and a called strike. Oh, 94, 94 inside. Yeah, that's uh, the hardest I've seen Boston throw this year. And, and gets, gets the inside strike call. 0-1 to York. If you get that pitch, you just repeat and not going to be able to hit that. Mm, just missed low. That was 93 down and in, but appeared to nearly bite that inside corner. It goes to ball one. One ball, one strike to York. A healthy hack there from York, and he's now stepping out of the box to reset in a 1-2 count. Yeah, the curveball was filthy. He had no chance there. Throw this thing, start in the middle, run it away. York 0 for 2 of the runs scored. And cool. swings and misses at the breaker. The curve from Boston Mabius and gets BYU out of the inning. One run scores, but only one. The Cougs will take an 8-7 lead to the bottom of the eighth for the Lopes. One run on two hits, no errors, one left on board. 8-7 Cougs on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Cougars baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. We go bottom of the eighth here at Miller Park. BYU eight and Grand Canyon seven. New pitcher for the Lopes. It's number 14. Nathan Ward, 3.93 ERA. 18 and a third innings pitched on the year. One-on-one -on -one record making a 17th appearance. Second most among Lopes pitchers. No decisions on the year. Has given up just over a hit per inning at 19. Only eight runs allowed. All of them earned. 21 strikeouts. 14 walks. Batters, batters hitting 279 against Nathan Ward. And Ward goes 6'8", 275. First battery faces is Luke Anderson, a two-hopper to short. Neville guns over 
to Ankeny. And on the 6-3, one gone here in the eighth. York, I should say York, is obviously at first base in place of Ankeny, who left earlier to go to left field. And, and Neville almost booted that. He actually scores his glove a little too early, Greg, and ended up having to barehand that on top of his glove, and then was able to field it and throw him out. So one gone for Kohio Loy. By the way, Luke now three for five on the night with a pair of home runs. Kohio tonight is 0 for four, two strikeouts, two ground outs. So Kohio is due, one for his last 20 at the plate. 0 for 0, 0 1 count from Ward. That's popped up behind first base. Second baseman's giving him a long run. Right fielder will come in and call him off and make the catch. Pelk with the catch and two gone for BYU here in the eighth quickly. So a ground out to short, a fly out to right, and now Colin Ruder will bat. His last at bat was a 436 foot home run to left field which followed Anderson's homer to left. They sandwiched a Kohio Aloy ground out. About two homers in the sixth. Another run plates in the seventh, and that's the winning run for the moment. At 8-7, the Cougs lead it. Reuter now batting 272. Up a little bit to 279 when two are out and two are out. The 1-0 to Collin. Almost hit him. Breaker inside. 2-0. Earlier this inning, we explored the Big 12 scoreboard brought to you by Explore Utah Valley. Enjoy Utah Valley's food scene in downtown Provo, where 50-plus local restaurants provide a wide variety of food experiences. Find your happy here. Learn more at utahvalley.com. That's a breaking ball away. So 3-0 to Colin Reuter. He might have a 3-0 like green light right here. One more run will be really big in this game. And a take of a fastball up in the zone. Strike one. Colin now with hits in five of his last seven games. Three-one from Ward. And gets Reuter into a three-two count. Back-to-back -back called strikes. He went top of the zone for strike one, bottom of the zone for strike two. Colin one for four tonight after going one for four against the Lopes in Mesa. Full count. And pops it up out of play. Just beyond the grandstand to our right on a sold out night here at Miller Park. It's a quick game. They might have to, fans might have to stick around for a half hour to let the sun go down for fireworks. <laughs> let it get really dark. Two hours and 38 minutes old at the moment. Payoff pitch. Walked him. So a two-out walk issued to Colin Reuter. And a runner on base for Cooper Vest. Solo home run for Coop. Scored two runs on the night, giving him 37 for the season. He's the BYU leader in runs scored. He struck out but reached on a third strike not caught in the first and scored on an E4, then struck out in the second. Solo home run on the fourth and flied out to left in the sixth. So one for four with a couple of runs for Cooper Vest. A 250 hitter. Breaking ball stayed up top and away. Ball one to Coop. Yes, it is fireworks night. Where do they get shot out of? Uh, at the Marriott Center parking lot right there. Okay. That's beyond the left field wall here at Miller Park. And I tell you what, it's the show they put on last year. Holy cow. The show they put on in the fall for homecoming when we had our blue-white game. I'm just like, I think the fall, though, we lucked out because soccer didn't get a chance to do theirs, so mm. we got to use theirs as well. It mm. was unbelievable. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Extras. 2-0 to Coop with a runner on. BYU a one-run lead, 8-7. to seven. The Lopes are down to their final three outs in the ninth. Beautiful pitch. That's a good take, 2-0. Backdoor curveball there. It's a pitcher's pitch. Two and one now the count. We've had some fireworks in game. Five home yes, runs between the two teams. Make it seven, actually. BYU are six with four. BYU with four. And the Lopes with two. Foul back out of play. Yeah, six dingers in total. Luke Anderson two. Reuter one. Vest one. And for the Lopes, Wilson, who's out of the game, had one. And Galvin, who's out of the game, had one. 
Two balls, two strikes. Two out, one on. One run lead, 8-7. Bottom eight, Cougs in front. Left-handed right fielder Vest holds the barrel above his left shoulder and awaits the offering from Nathan Ward. And handcuffed him. Swing and a miss, and that's it for BYU in the eighth. The Lopes down to their final three outs for BYU in the eighth. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base. Top nine coming up. Cougs 8-7 the lead on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Greg Rubel. BYU 8 and Grand Canyon 7 is our score. The Lopes, who've won 10 of 11 games coming into this one, are on the ropes. Lopes on the ropes in the ninth here. 8-7, the Cougar lead. Stone Cushing is in to help close things out for BYU. If Stone gets the save, it'll be number 10 on the year. Well, he's the guy you want right here. He's been really good for us. You know, he struggled on Thursday last week, but uh, was really good on Saturday. Every time he goes out, you just know he's going to give it everything he's got. Only eight pitchers nationally have double-digit saves this season. No one has 10. There are a bunch of guys with 11 or more, but no one with 10 on the number. We'll see if Stone can get number 10 in this one. It's already one of the best single season save numbers ever at BYU, and he's high in the career list as well. He's top five in both. The nine, one, and two hitters do up. But importantly, the one hitter will not be Tyler Wilson after he got injured in a first base collision with Colin Reuter. And the first pitch from Cushing is inside and nearly hit Cooper Neville, the nine-hole hitter. He dodged out of the way. He was very nearly put on base here to lead off the ninth. Well, that's how he got himself in trouble on Thursday. It was, it was walk hit by pitch, and then they started rolling. So just a little too pumped up on that one. And it's called strike on the second pitch. The Cougs have lost only one game, taking a lead to the ninth all year. That was that Baylor game that the Bears won in extras. Lopes, meantime, have three wins when trailing after eights. They have had a few comebacks on the year. Called strike on pitch number three. One and two to Cooper Neville. Great slider right there, back door. Stone Cushing working third base side of the rubble, r- r- rubber. His staggered stance delivery, very distinctive. The 1 2 and a strikeout of Cooper Neville. Handcuffed him. Slider inside, and that's one gone for the Lopes here in the ninth. They're down to their final two outs. Neville down on strikes. Yeah, you call that the back foot slider. It's either going to be down for a ball or a swing and miss, and it was perfectly executed by Stone right there. Cannon Peary who pinch hit or pinch ran for Trevor Wilson when he got Tyler Wilson when he got hurt on that collision at first base. Will now bat in the one spot with Eddie Pelk on deck. One gone. BYU a one run lead. 8-7. And Stone gets early in the count. Ahead of Peary. 1-0-1. Oh you know, every team knows Stone's going to come in and throw a bunch of sliders. That's the, that's the book on him. But uh, start, they're really hard to hit. They're great pitches. 0-1. Oh, Ooh, fouled. Yeah, and then they're Off sitting. the facing of the uh, Grand Canyon dugout. 0-2. Oh, then they're sitting on slider. So then he throws a 93 mile an hour fastball that he's laid on and fouls into the dugout. So he's got a good arsenal. Let's throw that slider down and away right here. Trust Parker's going to block it. He has a four seam and a two seam, doesn't he? Yep. 0 2 to Cannon Peary. Mm, set him up, and he got a top of the zone. Zone biter, yeah, and he close. missed, and it's called ball one. Yeah, it's a little up. I'm, I'm okay with that being called up, top of the zone. One ball, two strikes to Peary. BYU eight, lope seven, one out, top nine, and he's down on strikes. Cannon Peary swings and misses, and Stone Cushing's got it going on. Back-to-back swinging strikeouts. And now the tying run coming to the plate in Eddie Pelk. The last hope for the lopes for the moment. Well, Stone still, Cushing. Still work to be done here. That last out of a game is usually the hardest. Two Eddie, big strikeouts, give yourself a chance. Eddie Pelk, who a couple of weeks ago had a, had a nine RBI game, has hits in eight of his last nine, no hits on this night, and he swings and misses at the first offering from Cushing. It's an 86, slider beneath the knees. 86 mile an hour slider, and Pelk looked like he did not see that at all. He's on a four-game hit streak coming in, and he's the Lopes' last hope right now. 0-1 to Pelk. Stone kicks, fires high away, 1-1, one and one, the count even. Do you get nervous as I do in these situations? I, I, yeah, very much. I'm <laughs> leaning forward. I'm <laughs> just 
Let's find it away. One and one the count. Cushing winds and deals. A foul ball back to the netting. So here it is. One ball, two strikes. The Lopes down to their final strike. The Cougs looking to close out their home season on a winning note. The fans rise to their feet. And now with the two strikes, they're going to shift on him and move the third baseman to short and move everyone out. BYU shifting to the right. Stone on the hill. Staggered stance. Wind and fire. And that's hit in the air. Go get that. To the gap in right. And caught by Cooper Vest on the run. That will do it. Stone Cushing records his 10th save of the season. The Cougs close the game and close the home slate with an 8-7 win over Grand Canyon. Wow, what a ninth inning by Stone Cushing. Nicely done. Oh, it feels good to win your last game of the year at home. Sell out crowd. Give the crowd something to cheer for. The crowd's on their feet with two strikes in the ninth. Oh, I love that feeling. I just got goosebumps how awesome that was, Greg. The crowd was on their feet, and Cooper Vest was on the run to track that down in right center. A catch made by Vest. The final out in an 8-7 to win. BYU over Grand Canyon. The Cougs finished their non-conference home slate at 7-1 on the year and end their 2024 home schedule on a winning note. BYU 8 and Grand Canyon 7 is our final score. This is a really good Grand Canyon team. They could be playing in the NCAA tournament. I mean, with or without a tournament win, I'm not so sure, but uh, it, I mean, they're, they're, they're an RPI team of 85 right now. Probably not good enough for at-large, but they're probably odds-on to win their own tournament right now. Yeah, they're hot. They're really good, and they're playing a really good UVU team this weekend, but that's that's a team that, that beat us earlier in the year, and then in the fall, we did not have a good game against them, and so beating a team like that feels really good, especially for your last home game. That was awesome. Post-game coverage will start after this. BYU 8 and Grand Canyon 7 are final score on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.